Hi everyone, my name is Ambeka Opel. I'm the manager of global programs at the Waterloo Institute for Sustainable Energy, also known as WISE. WISE is a research institute at the University of Waterloo that has a large focus on how to use energy as a catalyst for global change. Today, I would like to share with you how to look at energy in a new light, as a connector and a foundation for many forms of sustainable development. I'm speaking to you today from the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Neutral peoples. 10 kilometers on either side of the Grand River is known as the Haldimand Tract, land set aside for the Haudenosaunee by the British General Haldimand in return for their support to the British in the American Revolutionary War. Through the Dish with Wood Spoon Treaty, the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe agreed to share and protect this land together. But what you might not know is that all settlers have also been invited into this treaty, including myself, including many at WISE, and probably many of us listening right now. I am actively continuing to learn about the land and learn about my responsibilities as a Dish With One Spoon treaty member. And I encourage all of you who are listening right now to get to know whose land you live on as well. All right, let's get started. First, let's get familiar with the Sustainable Development Goals. In 2015, the member states of the United Nations worked together to create the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. These goals represent areas of human, environmental, and economic development that must be achieved by 2030 in order to create a sustainable and equitable world. These goals are extremely powerful as they provide a framework for guiding global development and indicators to measure their success. Each of these goals are important and necessary, and they're also interconnected. You can't achieve no poverty without gender equality, or climate action without strong institutions, and so on. Today, I'm going to do a deep dive on an often overlooked SDG, access to energy. Access to energy includes two things. The first is affordable and reliable electricity, and second is safe cooking methods. About two and a half billion people, a third of the world's population, doesn't have access to reliable energy. About 840 million of these people have no access to electricity at all. The percentage of access to energy is the lowest in Sub-Saharan Africa and South to Southeast Asia. I believe that if you could only make one positive change in a community, it should be the provision of safe, affordable, and clean energy. Providing access to energy can be used as a catalyst and a foundation for other spheres of development, including health, education, clean water, gender equality, and more. So if I were to reorganize the SDGs with energy at the center, I think it would look something like this. Starting with no poverty, all the way out to climate action, energy access has impacts on almost all of the sustainable development goals. All right, so let's dive into some examples of how energy does impact other kinds of development. First off, access to energy has impacts on health. Approximately 3 billion people around the world use solid fuels like wood, charcoal, or dung in order to cook. These fuels, especially when they're burned indoors, create harmful air pollution. In fact, the World Health Organization estimates that indoor air pollution from using uh, solid fuels for cooking is a larger killer than malaria, AIDS, and tuberculosis combined, almost 4 million people per year. Access to clean cook stoves or access to cleaner fuels such as liquid petroleum gas or electricity can have a large impact on reducing mortality and diseases due to indoor air pollution. Here's a picture of Basantgarh, India, a small village of about 60 families in the state of Punjab. Part of my family is from here and I got to visit it a few years ago. In Basantgarh, the main source of fuel for cooking and for heating is cow patties. So cow dung is taken, mixed with straw, formed into patties and dried in the sun. These patties are burned inside the home to provide heat for cooking, um, but also provide heat for uh, in the wintertime and at night when it gets cold. A lot of smoke and hazardous gases are created when these patties are burned, especially if the straw used has pesticides or other chemicals in it. These gases contribute to diseases like pneumonia, ischemic heart disease, and lung cancer. Another health example. Access to lighting is really key for health clinics where many children are born and patients are treated under a cell phone light or kerosene lamp. Sometimes a clinic might have access to electricity, um, but that access is just not reliable. Maybe they're connected to the grid, but there's a blackout, 
or maybe they have a diesel generator, but the diesel generator breaks down. So second example of how energy connects to other forms of development. Energy can have a positive impact on education. In communities with low access to energy, it's really common to see students working outside under a street light or under a kerosene lamp. Access to electricity can provide lighting in the evenings or night that help, that's helpful for studying, um, but it can also provide access to fans or air conditioning that makes studying and learning more bearable during the day. Third example, energy can be used for productive uses like pumping water. In this project in Phnom Kulin National Park in Cambodia, solar panels are used to power a process that pumps water from underground, filters it, and transports it about half a kilometer down the hill into tanks next to the local school and community health clinic. This system greatly reduces the time it takes for community members to access water, reduces cost as community members no longer have to purchase diesel, and improves the water quality. So just to share a quick story here, I visited Phnom Kulin almost exactly a year ago for a field visit to this project while I was working for the UN Development Program. And the house we were staying at over the weekend, for showering, water was pumped into a large stone basin. Now, the water was really murky because it was dry season, there hadn't been a lot of rain recently, and the generator-powered water pump had broken down. There was also no light in this area because it was outside. So, because of all this, my Cambodian colleagues were joking with me that as a Canadian, I would be too scared, I'd be too soft to use this Cambodian shower, and that I wouldn't use it for three days. But I decided I was going to prove them wrong. I went in the next morning with high hopes, but I came out with broken glasses, only one shoe, and a scraped knee, because it was just so hard to see in there. I, I guess I should have listened to my Cambodian colleagues. This is a lighthearted example, but I really learned the value of having light and having clean water that day. It sobers me to imagine if instead it had been the community's medical clinic that didn't have access to clean water or lighting and they had to treat patients that way. Here's a fourth example of the connections between energy and development. Access to energy has connections to gender equality. Households that are led by women have been found to be many times more likely to successfully learn about and adopt energy access solutions. Focusing on women-headed households is a strategy used by many development practitioners to catalyze development. In our projects at WISE, we've seen the impact women have on their communities and households, and often include entrepreneurship training or other supports to women to build the success of our energy projects. So, I've talked a lot about how energy can have a positive impact on other areas of human development, but I believe the power of energy access goes beyond development. Energy also provides a high social value that is difficult to be quantified. Energy can provide comfort through heating and cooling, sufficient light, powering entertainment, and more. Access to energy reduces the massive amounts of time and money many spend collecting wood, collecting diesel, fixing generators, etc. Energy provides safety, such as the lighting of dark roads, powering medical equipment, powering essential communications devices. Overall, I see energy as a sort of buffer that improves many aspects of life, both developmentally and socially. These five examples, health, education, clean water, gender equality, and the social value of energy, give you a snapshot of the transformative power that energy has to catalyze development. But what does this mean for you? You may remember the map I showed earlier. Canada is shown in a happy, dark blue, but energy access is not perfect in Canada and many of the other dark blue countries. Here's a map of the diesel-dependent communities in Canada. These communities are often remote, have high indigenous populations, are far away from infrastructure like electrical grids and road networks, and because of that rely on diesel generators for electricity. Diesel systems are generally less reliable, burning diesel can cause harmful health impacts, and diesel systems are expensive. People in Nunavut and the Northwest Territories, for example, pay three times as much for their electricity as I do in Ontario. There is incredible clean energy leadership across Canada that's working on energy access issues and is being led by Indigenous communities and organizations. Gull Bay First Nation, for example, created Canada's first fully integrated remote renewable energy storage microgrid. 
which is powering the community and reducing the need for diesel. Gull Bay First Nations microgrid is one of more than 197 medium to large and potentially more than 2,000 small renewable energy systems in place across Canada that have Indigenous leadership or involvement. Along with learning about issues and successes regarding energy access in Canada, my final call to action to all of you is simply to cherish your energy. Have gratitude that energy is available to you, that it's safe, it's reliable, and it's much more affordable than many other places in Canada and around the world. Be aware that your access to energy fuels more than you realize, so use it intentionally, conserve it where possible, and learn more about it when you can. As former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon once said, energy is the golden thread that connects economic growth, social equity, and environmental sustainability. I hope this presentation has helped you to appreciate this golden thread and to look at energy in a new light. Thank you.